Welcome to Real Relationship Goals, a podcast all about the realities of healthy relationships. Real Relationship Goals is a project of the Advocacy Center for Crime Victims and Children in Waco, Texas. If you or someone you know has experienced sexual violence or harassment and is seeking support, services, or needs more information, links to resources and our hotline number can be found in the description. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of their organizations or affiliates. Cool. Welcome back to Relationship Goals Podcast. Y'all thought that season four was over. It is now. We're bringing you a bonus episode brought to you by some eighth graders um, here in Waco, Texas. Um, <gasps> my name is Blythe. And uh, just to do some introductions, one thing I like to do with my family is go for bike rides. Um, my name is Kelly, and something that I like doing with my family is going out of town. Hi, my name is Olivia, and one thing I like to do with my mom is have our mom and daughter days and just to hang out. Uh, my name is Giselle, and one thing I like to do with my mom is be in all the business. <laughs> Love that. Hi, I'm Desi, or Desiree. I like to watch Marvel movies with my dad or go disc golfing. Hi, my name is Bridget, and I like to go out to eat with my family. Love that. Love that. So, um, I'm so excited to have our student takeover podcast. If you're watching that video, just as a caveat, for some privacy concerns, students are not visible, but I'll be doodling up on the board here. So, uh, one thing that we are really going to be talking a lot about in this episode is family relationships, right? And so we might hit on things, you know, parent-child relationships, sibling relationships, maybe some extended family, but a lot of kind of immediate family. Um, I'll be facilitating some of the questions, but I'm gonna give y'all a ton of space because you have so many good thoughts um, to talk about some family dynamics. So my two guiding questions are gonna be, what are some not so great things that families do? What are some great things, um, or like better things that family do? So to start us off, y'all tell me what are some toxic or maybe unhelpful traits, characteristics, or dynami- dynamics that y'all see in families, either your own or just in general. Definitely a toxic trait would be lying or mm. gaslighting, uh, because we need to have especially trust in our relationship, especially family, if you're going to be living with each other. Um, yeah, definitely that. Um, um. I definitely don't like the comparison that parents um, do with, like, one another. Like, oh, I wasn't like this when I was your age. But, like, I think they have to understand that we both lived in different generations and we have different things. So, like, one thing that would definitely be would be, like, the phone because they they like to use that a lot. Like, oh, you would get things much faster if you weren't on the phone. I didn't have a phone. I didn't have to do all this. Well, yes, but we're obviously, again, we were born in different generations and we have different, um, we have different, what's the word? We have different lives, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I get what you're coming from because sometimes, like, um, my family's always telling me, oh, get off your phone, you don't need to be on it anymore, um, you're wasting so much time mm-hmm. on your phone, you could be doing other things, but the thing is, like, Like you said, we're living in a different generation. We're different from them. And it's like, like, in our generation, we're basically like on our phones and stuff, but there's some things that we do on our phones that are educational. Mm -hmm. And like, they don't understand that. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. it's just like that. Yeah, I feel like that thought all ties into like comparing themselves to you, especially uh, if you are going through a hard time and you're trying to explain to them your hard time because they ask. And then they go on to a rant about how they feel and about their past. And they, and whenever, also, that also says whenever they tell you to be a kid and to, like, be kind of like their generation. But then whenever you're like them, then they tell you to grow up. And it's like, it's like when, when we're trying to still act like a kid, they always tell us, like, you know, why are you acting like this? You're almost this age you can't be acting like this you need to grow up more um people are gonna like they're not gonna want you like this they're not gonna hire you for a job or whatever if you act like this and it's like but we can't help ourselves we're still kids and we're still learning and And yeah we're still learning or like um they be like saying um like be a kid like you're still young do Mm -hmm. this do that 
But then when we ask if we can do this, they're like, no, you have to do this. You have responsibilities. Or they want us to um, grow up and stuff like that. But then they're yeah. like, go outside, be a kid, do this. And then, like, d- which one do you want us to be? Do you want us to stay a kid or, like, grow up? Uh, yeah, because also adults really seem to think that, you know, that we're just going to automatically have all the things that they want us to have. <laughs> like, say you wanted to start your own business and then your parents are just like, no, you're never going to make any money like that. Nobody's going to, there's already mm. too many people doing that. Why don't you just go get a job like everybody else? But that's what makes me happy. So, like, instead of, you know, being so controlling about the idea, or, um, you're, like she said, you're never going to get through that. Maybe be more supportive. That would help. But, I feel like, at, at some points that, um, that sometimes my siblings, they, um, it's like they say something like, oh, um, if there's anything going on, I need, can you, like, tell mm-hmm. me or something? But it's, like, when there's something going on with them, they don't tell you. And, mm-hmm. like, how, like, let's say we're doing, how do we're, we have I, that trust how, how do we have that trust between us? And it's, like, like, let's say if I told you something, you're probably going to go off and tell, like, like, you know, like, my mom, my brother, anyone mm-hmm. else. You're probably going to go on to say some, some, to tell someone else. And it's, like, how can I trust you with that? Yeah, that's definitely why I don't, like, um... Uh talking about my personal life at school especially Mm -hmm. or don't like crying at school nothing because our assistant principal who shall not be named uh (laughs) knows my parents and my sisters so if someone decides oh yeah uh desi was crying in the hallways or something then they'll tell him and then he'll tell my parents and then my parents will be uh like pressure me into like Tell you, like, like, what's wrong, blah, blah, blah. Why didn't you tell us this? Well, like, you should have noticed. Like, there's all these signs, and it's like you don't ever notice. It's And definitely whenever they'll say something like, oh, they just said this, you're being a baby, you need to brush it off, or you've handled something harder, it's, or I handled something harder, you're fine. It's like some people, like, there's some things that people say, and it's like you can't get over that because, I mean, personally, that's just you. And if, like, if there's something that you can't get over, then... That's like, just you. Everyone, that's exactly, handles, that's you. everyone handles things way different than others. Exactly. Or, like, when they put, like, all this responsibility on you, and then once you become overwhelmed and all this stuff, they're like, like, what's wrong with you? You're mm-hmm. failing all your classes. Mm-hmm. You're doing this. What's wrong? And when you tell them, they're like, okay, well, that means you don't need to do this. Or that's you not my to- fault. Or like you don't need to do this. I guess you don't have to do these um, extra activities that I'm letting you be in. But like, like, but those make me happy. Even though yeah. I'm stressed, those make me happy. And mm-hmm. if you take that away from me, I feel like I don't have anything really. Because mm-hmm. I don't do. You might not do a lot, but this might make you happy. But if you take that away, what I do think I have? The reason why, like an example, a person would be so overwhelmed, is because they. Um, a person would be so overwhelmed is because they're doing something that doesn't make them happy. Like, a, like she's, Olivia said, um, their parents might be like, oh, um, then you don't need to be doing this. But if you take that away, that takes away the happiness of being a child. And, yes, and then you'll just always be overwhelmed because you're doing something that you don't want to do. Definitely, especially whenever you have this one thing that's, like, holding you on to, like, your sanity or mm-hmm. something, like your phone. If you have someone on your phone that you like to talk to, that you need to vent, like that you like to vent to, they make your day better, and then they take away your phone. It's like, um, I feel like another, also another toxic trait that I have experienced mm-hmm. is like, um, personally, this is just with my sibling relationships. Um, sometimes like, um, I'm being left behind constantly sometimes with mm-hmm. my and like in my family because like, sometimes. Like, cause now my siblings, they're old enough. They have their own lives. It's like, I'm, I'm the, I'm the most youngest sibling in my family, and it's like everyone's just leaving me behind. And like, so like when I try to express my feelings, I feel left behind and I feel hopeless mm-hmm. because like it's like, my, the rest of my family is doing whatever they want to do, mm-hmm. and they're grown they're grown up. They're go they're going out. They have kids. Blah blah blah, and it's like I'm stuck at home, and trying to like, like and uncover my emotions 
in my space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I'm the oldest one, Mm -hmm. so I'm the one about to leave. I'm about to go to, like, an older grade. I have to, my mom was, like, always, like, think about college. What do you want to do? You're about Mm -hmm. to start driving this, this, and this. But I'm, like, I'm still trying to finish this. Like, Mm -hmm. can I finish this before you make me try to push off? Because my mom was always telling me this, like, like, maybe she can give me pointers instead of, like, trying to always push that onto me. Mm-hmm. And, like, like give me a second to breathe. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're pushing this all, like, down my throat. Mm-hmm. And, and um, like, how am I supposed to uh, do this and, like, finish? Like, yeah. I, guess, I don't know. Um, I think a toxic trick that I see with my mother that kind of ties to my siblings is that Recently, my little brother has not been the best at school. So she's always like, why can't you be like your sister? Why can't you do this? Why do you have to be out like this? We give you the enough attention that you need just because we're giving her a little bit more because she needs help or because that she's older and she's getting to do all these things doesn't mean that we love you any less. But then again, if she's telling it to him so aggressively. Yeah. And I've talked to him before, and the reason he's been doing all this stuff is because... He feels like that the only way that he's different from me is to become the opposite, and which is throwing these tantrums and doing all of this stuff. And I told him, no, that you're amazing the way you are, but he's telling me that uh, my parents aren't giving him that kind mm. of reassurance that he needs to feel secure and safe. That's deep. About That's himself. the deepest I've heard you talk about your life. That's deep. That's scary. It's, it's not that scary. <laughs> No, it's it's kind of, be quiet. So like, kind of, does anyone have like any like positive traits in their yes. family? Yes. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I, I love my I love my parents and I love my siblings. Um, like when we hang out and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I yeah. one yeah. thing that's really 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 great that I love about my family <laughs> is that if you're ever like down, they'll never really tell other families about it they'll just Mm. kind of like here come with me Mm. take you to a separate room where there's not a lot of people and they're like okay breathe now tell me what's wrong or if you don't want to talk about it comforting you basically and which is really sweet because my aunt does that to me a lot Mm -hmm. she's she's really nice and she it just takes the time to like try to understand how i'm feeling or try to make me feel better than i am make you feel known yeah Yeah, like like seen heard like olivia said um like I love my family and like I love my siblings and I do I do have like um a, I definitely have a relationship with them but there is like some things that we could fix um and that would be like maybe not communication, communication definitely not very much yelling because like I said before if you yell at me you're obviously showing me that you're mad but you're not really telling me what you're mad at and mm-hmm. that's where I need more reassurance so then I don't guess myself, but and then if I guess, I might be wrong, and then I get the whole situation wrong, and then if I do it again, like try again, they'll be like, oh, like have you learned last time? But I didn't. I told you, know. you this already. Yeah. And then like, um, like a positive thing for me, I feel like, um, like there's some times where they notice stuff is going on but they're not sure about it Mm -hmm. so they they kind of just ask about it it, but like again they just kind of just shut it off and move it to the the side but um is it okay if i say another like like negative yeah we can go backwards okay sorry you're Um, good another like okay so for me another negative trait is like um when like okay so sometimes in my like perspective in my like relationship between my uh siblings sometimes like there's only like the only problem when they try to talk to me is when like let's say i'm like acting up in school or something they're always like they're coming like towards me they're always like like they're going off on me but the thing is they don't know the reality of school they don't know the reality of like what's going on here or like um what like what is actually going on in this building like they don't know that because they don't ask about because they don't ask about what's going on in school and it's like the only time they ever communicate with me because sometimes they'll be like they'll stop talking to me for like about a a week or two and they won't talk there will be no communication in between like us and so like the only time i that they ever talk to me really really be able to talk to me is when like i 
get in trouble at school or there's something there's a problem at school that's when they actually like communicate yeah. and ask what is going on i had uh two sisters because i have two sisters that i live with um both of them have deeply struggled um one of them struggled with mental health and uh, school things and the other one uh, struggled with like she is ADD, ADHD, mm-hmm. OCD. Mm-hmm. She struggled with that, all of that and mm-hmm. grades. So my parents kind of built like a pyramid of who they pay more attention to regarding like problems in their life. I'm mm-hmm. the supposedly the perfect child is what my sisters kind of refer to me as. They, uh, they kind of built like a pyramid of them two at the top because they struggled more than me and they made they it just so think that, like, that but sometimes like yeah. there's some stuff that you're going through and you can't explain it with everyone because like they, they won't understand them. yeah more. and they feel like because they struggled more that i don't struggle and that mm-hmm. i don't need mm-hmm. help because mm-hmm. i'm the perfect one i do a b's mm-hmm. i don't have ocd i don't have anything well i do have ocd but no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have my, oh sorry go ahead um, oh my gosh, i forgot what i was gonna say or, like, they think um, that if you don't say anything, like, you're fine or something. But sometimes it's, it can be kind of hard to, like, get it out there. And you don't know where, Express like... Express it. Or, like, where yeah. to start. Like, do you just go up to them? Or, like, do you wait until they come to you? Or when they ask you what's wrong, but, like, you can't tell them exactly because there's so much... There's so much going on around and, that yeah. you don't know where to start or, like, where to, like, grab. So, definitely with that is uh, whenever... When you're having a deep conversation, and then they'll tell you something in the deep conversation, but whenever it actually happens again, and you bring the deep conversation back up, to then like, it's oh, like, oh, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm, like, I changed my mind, mm-hmm. or uh, they just act differently than they did during that conversation. Mm-hmm. It's like, they go back on their word, or, like, uh, problems I've had with my parent, with specifically my mom. She'll tell me, oh, I love you, don't worry, I'll show you as much attention as your parent or your sisters. Uh, And then whenever something is rung up and I'll say I need help too, then she'll be like, well, I need your help with your sisters. So So, um, I definitely think that like this, uh, with the whole problems that we are all having that we don't like, Mm -hmm. I think we definitely all have to like communicate. But it's definitely most parents trying to communicate with us. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think about it, you know, like parents obviously aren't perfect. I don't think there's such thing as a perfect siblings. parent. Mm-hmm. Siblings too. Mm-hmm. So I think it's mostly like you also kind of have to think about how your parents grew up. Because like Desiree say, her mom wasn't, she didn't grow up with attention or like affection. Mm-hmm. And so like my mom, um, she definitely probably didn't grow up with communication there so you also kind of have to work with that with your parents Mm -hmm. so I think that's one way that um you as like um as a child child could communicate work that out with your parents you could have like a better relationship so like what are some like ways for you to like for your family or your siblings to like help you in order for this to like you know alternatives I guess I guess some way that you could help that is by calling them out on their bluff Mm -hmm. would be like uh well you said you yourself said or like if you have any proof to show well you don't really need proof because if they truly cared about the conversation you had then they they would they would know what they Mm -hmm. what you were talking about yeah like my when me and my mom talk well yeah when me and my mom talk you know she tells me like how um how her mom was and how, even though she was, like, an only child, like, how she... she you, try, you try to relate, kind of, to Yeah, it. she's, like, she tells me, like, um, how she was an only child, when I'm not an only child, that how her and her mom weren't the best, and how she wants me and her to be better than that, how mm. her and her parents were. And because me and her are kind of, like, on the same level, like, she's, she dealt with this, and I'm kind of going through that same path. But she mm-hmm. doesn't want me to go through that. Mm-hmm. She wants me to be better. Mm-hmm. And I understand that. But like, but there's no the, there's no way of kind of yeah. running from that unless I try. And I do talk to her, mm-hmm. but it's kind of hard to bring up like specific things, topics. Yeah. yeah, either that or they have a way to jump around that. And some mm-hmm. like other alternatives for like situations like this, mm-hmm. I feel like they like more communication, of course, mm-hmm. and um, and like I want I just want to build trust up with them. 
because mm. without trust there's no really relationship mm-hmm. in between both of y'all yeah so i want to build trust i want them to be able to like not like run to me to be able to like to tell me everything mm-hmm. but i just want to understand like their perspective a little bit more and i want to be able to like um because obviously like i would want my parents to know about what's going on with me because <coughs> i don't want them like going through my phone and then reading all the stuff that i'm telling my friends but i'm not telling them mm-hmm. so i don't want to make it seem like i don't trust them because i do right. trust them i i trust them with certain topics with mm-hmm. certain stuff but you know uh me personally i haven't really gone to that like trust level where i would 100 percent trust so them. definitely definitely more trust for mm-hmm. a healthier alternative um what do you think it looks like? Can I ask to yeah. to build trust? A heart. Oh. Like if somebody's like, how do I start to build trust with talk? Mm, like, talk. Talk. Bubble. Start more slowly. Don't like just communication. Don't Go rush it into it. Like start building it slowly. Like start telling them not everything because you don't always have to tell them everything because sometimes you have to set boundaries for yourself also because yeah. if you just tell them everything, then they might try to turn that around because you never know how then people they try change. to they try might to use that on you yeah. for like. You know, let's say, future. Yeah, yeah, the future. And sometimes you don't want to go in too fast because you don't know exactly what you're going to say. Mm-hmm. And if you blurt out something that may, like, hurt their feelings. I've been through that before, talking to someone, and then you don't, like, plan what you're going to say. Mm-hmm. Say something bad, and then... I just read my mom them. letters. Yeah, like, letters. I get a little piece of paper, and anything I want to talk to her about that I'm not strong enough to go up to her to myself... Mm-hmm. You write it down, and I just kind of like slip it no, somewhere. I, I've been, I've been, I've been wanting to do that like for a while, just like yeah. explain everything. So like, yeah, I think it, yeah, you gave me a good idea for a healthy alternative. That is a good one. I yes. like that one. Uh, we write letters, and my mom will write me one back, and then I will come back and pretend nothing ever happened. <laughs> but we still had that, you know, deep mm-hmm. conversation because yeah. on the little paper, yeah. I I don't like Thank confronting you. her face to face because yeah. she has like this mean look on her face every time she mm. talks to me. But yeah, my mom even does though, too, even though she yeah. kind of like be like you know oh I understand her face be like I don't know if you do like I'm kind of yeah, scared she, my mom like, my mom has that told something to my mom once and she looked at me like disgusted like and I was yeah I can't handle especially a mother's judgment a mother's oh, judgment yeah, that hurts sure. like I, ten I, times I probably worse. like just break into tears mid sentence yeah. okay before we wrap up any other things that you're like man if. My family can start doing this before we get to our relationship goal. Don't worry. I'll, uh-huh. I'll plug you mm-hmm. in. Okay. I got you. Um, any other things you want to say of, hey, this is what I think I, like a healthy dynamic looks like or just any other things of like this is what I want, my dream for what a family could look like? My dream is that my mom will stop pushing her responsibilities onto me because she has a night job. She mm-hmm. sleeps, but mm-hmm. she, th- she expects me to do everything that she's supposed to do when she's asleep. Like, cook, watch my brothers, clean the house, do all this really tedious things that I really can't do because I need to study and stuff for school. I need to do homework. I might be failing, and she's just like, no, you have to do the dishes and fold the laundry and watch your little brothers and make sure they don't get into a mess. And I'm like, Mom. So, like, a dream of mine, I feel like... um, like, I would, I would love my family to come together and, like, just, you know, just, like, talk about, mm. like, like their feelings, I guess. Because, like, in my family, we never really talked about each other's feelings because we, we, we just never grew up to be a family like that. Mm-hmm. So I feel like um, I would love, like, for my family to be able to come together and talk about their feelings, like, towards mm-hmm. one another or, like, how, like, they're feeling. Just basically just, you know, just tell us so that we understand yeah mm, i feel like my dream would be even though it's like kind of like yeah wonky like there's good parts and bad parts sure. i kind of wish that those bad parts aren't so like, visible ter- yeah terrible because my mom would tell me like like she might be disappointed in me but mm-hmm. like there's a reason why i might have done that or maybe like instead of like kind of being mad and stuff like that like and and those words like like those words like those words are like they hurt they hurt really really bad and it's like you have like they just get stuck and they get glued into your mind and to the point where sometimes you just like sometimes you have to cry about it Mm -hmm. or sometimes you just get scared to do anything else because you're afraid because you're afraid of disappointing them Mm -hmm. and that's healthy it's healthy to cry Mm -hmm. it is yeah but then, then like later on, they act like everything's okay. Like, like come sit, yeah. come watch TV with us. Well, I'm like, I didn't you just told so me that much. you were disappointed in me? Like, 
Mm-hmm. How do you want me to take that in? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's not. Okay. I'm I'm gonna need a couple of days to process that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. A dream of my family would definitely mm-hmm. be for people to express what they feel because mm-hmm. my family is big on like being quiet and mm-hmm. don't say anything, definitely. but secretly being mad at that yeah. person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then later, like. Definitely, I understand whenever my parent, when my sister acts like, hey, uh, you want to go, like, watch TV with me or something? Because that's her way of saying I'm sorry. Because, yeah. like, she doesn't know how to communicate. That's big something that we don't really do is communication. Yeah, I w- I w- yeah, I would love the same thing. That's basically, we have kind of the same dream a little bit. But, yeah. Well, cool. Okay, so we're just going to close that with our so, relationship goal. So, um... I would say, like, in conflict, when we do something wrong, instead of, like, yelling or uh, trying to hide our feelings with, like, something else, I think it would just... I think it would um, be better if you just tell us how you're feeling or why you're feeling that way because then I'll, like, we'll understand way much more about your feelings and we'll learn and... Yeah. Sometimes we won't be able to, like just like read yes. off of you yeah you just have to tell us mm-hmm. yeah so thanks y'all for tuning into this bonus episode with these incredible <laughs> students i know i learned so much yes. and hopefully we'll see you next season bye bye bye, <laughs> bye. bye. <laughs>Thanks so much for tuning in to Real Relationship Goals. This episode was produced by the Prevention and Education Department of the Advocacy Center for Crime Victims and Children in Waco, Texas. You can follow us on Instagram at ACCVC underscore prevention. See you next time.